Uh, in this video, we are going to uh, integrate uh, the jet engine uh, with the uh, airplane as we have it at the moment. Um, so I already did some pre-calculations uh, for the design of the engine, uh, or at least the engine cowling. Uh, and based on the, um, uh, the data sheet here, I've already estimated that the, uh, the engine is going to uh, uh, have a length of 4.8 meters. Uh, and a maximum diameter of 1.1 meters. So this, this engine is really a low bypass ratio turbofan, um, which has the, the cowling covering the entire engine. So there's a mixer inside. Um, uh, the goal of this um, video is to show you how to integrate uh, th this engine uh, with the fuselage, because we have decided that the uh, airplane, or I have decided that this airplane is going to have a fuselage mounted engine. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to look at where this engine needs to be located. And for that, I uh, look at some of the guidelines that we have in the slides. So, um, for example, here uh, you see uh, for transport jets where these fuselage mounted engines uh, are integrated in the, in, in the top view. And based on that data, uh, I deduced basically two rules. And the first rule says that the highlight, so the, the intake plane of the engine, needs to be at least a diameter, uh, an inlet diameter behind the uh, rear exit. Now we've already drawn in the rear exit, so we're gonna, we're gonna see how that would work if we would do that. Because if I would position that engine on, in the side view behind that inlet, and I, I take about a diameter behind that, that you can, then you can see here that the engine actually sticks out of the rear of the fuselage. So that means that uh, this engine position is definitely not feasible because when I would rotate the airplane, the engine would touch the ground, something that you want to avoid at all times. So probably we're going to have to move this uh, rear uh, exit a little bit more forward uh, when after we've integrated this engine. So for now we're going to leave that rule and look at the other rule that's on here that says that the um, engine highlight or the, uh, the, in, the inlet plane of the engine uh, needs to be um, or can be ahead of the aft pressure bulkhead, meaning the end of the cabin, uh, with a length of about half the engine length. So the engine length was 4.8 meters half the engine length is 2.4 meters. So on my drawing, that is um, 2.4 centimeters. Now let me draw that in to the, um, to the drawing. First of all, uh, in the side view. So measuring 2.4. Excuse me, about here. So that gives me a vertical line here about where my the highlight of the engine can be and then i'm taking this this engine again so you see i cut this out from a piece of um, millimeter paper and i'm going to position it vertically while keeping the highlight plane the inlet plane on this vertical line making sure that the engine is not sticking out of the perimeter of my uh, fuselage such that the fuselage will always touch the ground first when the airplane would uh, over rotate. At the same time, I'm trying to keep it as low as possible because the engine is already above the center line of the fuselage and I want the thrust force to give me as small a moment as possible about the center of gravity. And I do that um, when I align the thrust vector with the center line. Well, that's not possible because then again, the, the engine would stick out of the, the, the perimeter. So I have to move it upwards just a little bit until um, it is actually uh, inside the perimeter of the fuselage. So that's, that's the location that I'm choosing. And with this um, cutout of the, um, of the engine, I'm simply copying uh, the corner points onto my drawing here. as well as the thickest point. So those will serve as sort of guidelines when I draw the rest of the engine. But now you see my, my um, exit is actually in, in the way. So I'm gonna remove that 
uh, that exit first before I drew the engine because I already know that that initial exit location that I thought about when I drew the um, the fuselage that is not going to be a good exit location and I'm gonna have to revisit that decision so now drawing the upper and lower curve of the engine and there you have it on the side of the fuselage right intake plane here um, next thing I'm going to do is say okay uh, looking at those rules here I'm putting this type 1 exit about one uh, inlet or highlight diameter ahead of the intake to ensure that people can safely get out there um, so the diameter of the inlet is about one meter so I'm going one meter forward this exit measured 60 centimeters in width and 1 meter 20 in height you see I'm redoing part of the work I already did before but just just to make sure that this becomes a feasible and consistent design and I put my type A door or sorry my type 1 door over there right and I got to do the same for the top view so I'm erasing that exit there and I'm copying the type 1 exit over here now why would you not position the engine more forward well, you might ask that has to do with the comfort of the of the passengers this engine is a very loud noise source as you can imagine so that's why we don't want to bring it more forward and expose even more passengers to this uh, to this uh, noise source um, so typically behind that engine one would put uh, galleys for example or lavatories uh, and if, if you have a somewhat larger airplane, you also sometimes see that there are indeed passengers sitting uh, quite close, but only a limited amount. Um, next thing we're going to do, if we have now done the, the side view, is um, look at the, the, the top view of the engine. And the first thing we need to look at is the, uh, the lateral position. So the lateral position is important because we need some spacing between the engine and the, uh, uh, and the fuselage to allow... Um, the uh, flow, or the boundary layer flow that is on the fuselage not to enter the intake. So we need the intake to have a little bit of an offset. So I'm getting my, uh, my engine again. The engine is axisymmetric, so I can use it uh, also in the, in the top view. Let me first draw that notional plane where it's starting. Then I'm putting the engine on there. And I'm allowing a little bit of space for the pilot. I'm having it the wrong way around. That's why I indicated the direction of flight on there with an arrow, which might be a handy way to do things. Okay, nicely aligning it. Yeah, that seems to be good. So a little bit of spacing in between. I'm choosing about, I think, one, one third of the diameter here. Um, now, the diameter is not a very good reference. I take about um, 40 centimeters, actually, as the, as the gap between, uh, between the two. It might be a little bit narrow, but for now, I think that's, that's kind of okay. Ideally, you would want this gap to be as small as possible from a, a one engine inoperative uh, condition point of view because if one engine is out um, this uh, the, the, the engine is still remaining provides you with the yawing moment and the closer you bring the engine to the center line the smaller this yawing moment actually is but on the other hand you don't want it so close to the 
the, to the fuselage that it actually ingests the fuselage boundary layer because that leads to distortion of the of the uh, of the fan flow. These are the kind of trades that we're making. Doing things a little bit the other way around here. First, drawing the the perimeter on the outside because I have still some dimensions that are interfering with my drawing here. It was all right. Then you have the engine in top view, but still it's still floating. So there's nothing uh, connecting it to the um, um, to the fuselage. So you have to draw a pylon. And typically the pylon starts a little bit behind the uh, the inlet to also reduce the interference between fuselage, inlet and, and pylon. So I'm letting it start about half a diameter rearwards. And um, keep in mind eh, so there's, there's, there's a structure inside this pylon that transfers the loads from the engine to the airframe. Um, quite a sturdy structure as you can imagine because we, we produce roughly uh, a cool, well, about 12% of um, the maximum takeoff weight in terms of thrust force from this engine. So it's a decent, decent force, needs a decent structure, uh, has, has therefore also some body to it. So the pylon is rather large to, to nicely cover this, this, um, this um, uh, structure. Um, I'm also giving it a little bit of forward sweep. You, you have a little bit of design freedom here on how you how you do that, but at least don't leave the engine floating. It needs to be attached. Okay, so that uh, gives me the airplane or the uh, the engine in in um, uh, top view. Um, always good to draw the engine center line in there, just to show that we are indeed looking at a symmetric or an axisymmetric body. And with that center line, I can also put that center line actually here in this drawing. And then the height of that center line is about five millimeters, so 50 centimeters um, above the aircraft center line. Then um, the next thing is to draw it in the front view. Now I brought this um, template. This template for circles. The, the outer diameter is um, 1.1. Um, sorry, the nacelle diameter, maximum nacelle diameter is 1.4 meters. And that's, I exactly have the 40 millimeters here. So I'm putting that one on my drawing. And we have an. Uh, an engine covered there. And it's kind of interesting to see that in the front view it seems like the engine is touching, uh, but that's because the engine is widening where the fuselage is narrowing, but in the front view it looks like it's touching, even though you can see in the front view, in the top view, that there is actually a gap of about 40 centimeters in between. Um, just uh, for visual indication, I al also look at the, the inlet is about 1.1, so I'm also drawing a little bit of a smaller circle inside, about uh, 11 millimeters. just to indicate that we're looking at an engine there. All right, and of course there's also one on the other side if you want to draw it, you're welcome to. You can see in the front view I already added the wing, um, but I hadn't added the wing yet in the top view and the side view because we need to uh, still determine its longitudinal position based on the on the center of gravity of the engine. Uh, now that the engine is placed, we can also, we can also show its center of gravity if we want. It's about 40% of the length. Um, so 40% of 4.8 meters. Right. So that's that is uh, that finalizes the integration of the uh, of the turbojet engine with already uh, a CG position located that we're going to use uh, to determine the um, the wing position, which is the next step in uh, in this process.